brazenly betrayed Brexit by proposing a deal with the EU that would de facto keep the UK in the customs union, subjecting us to the same regulatory and legal framework that we voted to leave, and hampering us from doing trade deals with other countries that would provide us with economic independence and prosperity. The very reason why we voted for Brexit in the first place. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when I went to vote in the referendum, I didn't see a third option that said leave, sign up to every everything under a different name and be the EU's bitch. To illustrate how much of a sellout this was, May ran the plan by Europhile in chief Angela Merkel before it was even seen by her own party's MPs. Knowing it was a bad deal, she preempted her own ministers resigning on Friday by telling them they'd be quickly forgotten and revoking access to their government vehicles. And guess who praised the plan? Anna Soubry, Ken Clark and Vince Cable, three of the biggest Ramonas in Parliament. That tells you everything. As we warned all along, Brexit is being betrayed. Theresa May and her negotiators have cowed and rolled over to the EU at every turn. Her prime negotiator is a Remainer who in his Oxford days was a Soviet fanboy who defended Stalin and implied communism was preferable to capitalism. At this point, they're taking the piss. So what happens next? Well, Boris and Davis have indicated that they resigned not to force Theresa May out, but to force her to revise her disastrous Brexit plan. Which, given that she's had two years to craft it, and has delivered what Boris himself called a giant turd, sounds like a forlorn hope. It's time for Theresa to go. It's time to flush the turd. 15% of Conservative MPs, or 48 of them to be precise, have to write a letter to the 1922 committee triggering a vote of confidence in Theresa May. If she loses, then she's toast. That will trigger a new leadership contest, which hopefully a committed Brexiteer will win. The new leader will then almost certainly feel a need to secure a mandate from the country by calling a new general election. He or she will then have to defeat Labour's Jeremy Corbyn and save the UK from entering a hard left tyranny ruled by someone who thinks Venezuela's socialist dystopia is a good example to follow. If Corbyn wins, he'll almost certainly derail Brexit or call for a second referendum. If May wins, she'll deliver, at best, a soft Brexit which is a Brexit in name only, which is no Brexit at all. So it's basically all or nothing. We need a leader who believes in Brexit. For most people, that man is Jacob Rees-Mogg. But JRM is a reluctant leader. He's said numerous times he doesn't want to do it. Could Rees-Mogg be kingmaker? Could it be time for Boris? Since the day after Brexit, I warned that the vote to leave was merely the start of the battle. Don't expect the elite to take this lying down. They'll just make us vote again in another referendum until they get the result they want. These people are snakes. Don't think the battle is won. It's only just beginning. Theresa May is surrounded by establishment globalists who share the very same attitude that sold us out to the EU in the first place. The very backstab that Margaret Thatcher warned us about. There'd be no European Central Bank accountable to no one, least of all to National Parliament. Yeah, yeah. Because the point of that kind of European Central Bank is no democracy taking powers away from every single parliament and being able to have a single currency and a monetary policy and an interest rate which takes all political power away from us. As my right honourable friend said in his first speech after the proposal of a single currency, a single currency is about the politics of Europe, it is about a federal Europe by the back door. They have no interest whatsoever in delivering Brexit. They have no loyalty to this sovereign nation. So Conservative MPs have a choice to make. Is your loyalty to Theresa May's dreadful political legacy, a legacy that has betrayed 17.4 million people and the very notion of democracy itself, a legacy that has led directly to the UK's soaring violent crime problem, a legacy that has exacerbated the problem of mass uncontrolled immigration, a legacy that has eroded free speech and emboldened cultures hostile to our own. Is your loyalty to that worth more than your loyalty to your country? Is it worth more than your loyalty to the sanctity of democracy? Is your legacy going to be about how you sold out to Brussels or how at this pivotal moment in UK political history you stood up for Great Britain? <laughs> 
please click the big red button to subscribe. It really helps me when you do that. And click the bell to allow notifications so you never miss a new video. Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine. If you're interested in healthy thyroid, if you're interested...